Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin and today we have another episode from Mongolia. We're going to be spending the day once again with a nomadic family and today's episode is all about dairy. So we're here early in the morning, you can see I'm on the wide open steppe of Mongolia and this family that we're spending the day with has all kinds of cows. Mongolians are famous for making dairy into all sorts of things. It's early in the morning so we're going to be starting with breakfast. This evening we'll be milking the cows and I also think we're going for a little bit of a horse ride today. It's going to be an interesting day. The setting, the landscape is absolutely beautiful here. So let's uh, see what we get up to. For today's episode, we are way outside of any city and you can see this just beautiful, beautiful landscape and this family is the only settlement as far as the eye can see, there is absolutely nothing else. So we're about five, maybe six hours drive from the capital of Ulaanbaatar in and around the area of Darkhan and Saling province. So let's go inside the yurt and meet the family. <laughs> So we are in the gear now. We're just starting the fire to make several different breakfast items. She's got a whole bucket full of pine cones and maybe some like sticks and stuff and I think that's what she's gonna use to start the fire. So the first thing we were cooking, which is common all across Mongolia, is the milk tea. So she actually added salt. Milk tea here is usually salty. Uh, a little bit of black tea leaves, some water, and some milk. This is a gorgeous gear that we're in right now, and there's tons of colors around, a couple beds, and of course in the middle is the stove that we're gonna be doing all the cooking at, and it's a wonderful place. So full families live inside these gears, sometimes, you know, eight or more people, and uh, there's just little sections for the bed, little section for the kitchen, and the bathroom is outdoors. So the fire is on, the milk tea is boiling away, and we're going out to uh, get the clotted cream. So we're in a different gear now. This is where they're preparing the clotted cream. Same setup, the stove is right in the middle. And uh, I think she's boiling away the milk to make the clotted cream. So the process of making the clotted cream is pretty simple. They boil the milk for several hours and then they let it sit for 24 hours overnight till the next day and that forms that top layer, that clotted cream. So right now she's just scraping off yesterday's milk. One very important step to making the clotted cream is to froth the milk very much. She kept frothing it, kept pulling it, and the only thing added to this other than milk is a little bit of flour. So we will be eating yesterday's clotted cream because it needs to sit for 24 hours. We're heading back to the other yurt to uh, check on the milk tea. Yes. Mm. 
So we have the fresh milk tea with the salt and black tea, water, milk, very simple. Let me try it. Mm. It is definitely unique. You can taste the tea. You can taste that creaminess of the milk, but then the salt is what makes it different. I've never had tea in another country that had salt in it, but it is really good. I've gotten used to it here. We've been drinking it quite often. We're now making our next dish, it's called halmuk, and it's just a little bit of sugar, some of the clotted cream and flour, and she's frying it all up. So first she melted down some frozen clotted cream, now she's adding a little bit of flour, and this this is super hot, this fire is blazing, and she's, all, she's frying it up. You can see it's sort of starting to kind of congeal, and the oil that you can see releasing is actually ghee, so a byproduct of this is going to be the ghee, and ghee is common, they'll put it in milk tea, they'll even put it in vodka here, so look at this. It's almost, almost looks like cottage cheese. Oh, it smells really, really good too. So they removed the ghee, which will actually be used in another dish we're having for breakfast. Added a little bit of sugar, stirring vigorously. I think it's just about done now. We are sitting down for breakfast. A couple of the things are already prepared. We're going to be having some more. The first is this, the clotted cream, which we just saw her preparing. This is yesterday's cream. And then back here is the halmek, which is very interesting. I've never had anything like this, so I'm gonna try this. We've got a massive pile of it, and it's recommended to try it on some bread. There is a lot of flies right now because it's autumn, and this is the season for them, but let me try this. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's simple. The flavor isn't strong at all. There's a slight sweetness and it's a little bit oily, but the texture is really unique. It's almost like a jam. It's like a texture of a thick jam. It's actually mainly just the flavor of that oil. Mm. So next up is the clotted cream. Grab a chunk of this and a little bit more cream. Let's try. Mm. Oh yeah, that is so good. So hearty, so rich, but so natural at the same time. No ingredients added, just a little bit of flour and some boiled milk. It reminds me of Kaimak from Turkey except without the honey, so it's not so sweet, but this is like my ideal breakfast. That was a good appetizer for breakfast. Now we're moving on to the next thing. She's preparing some uh, dough, which she's gonna fry, make kind of like a biscuit. The way that she's forming the dough, I've never seen it been done quite like that before. She makes two long incisions to cut it into kind of a rectangle, and then one shorter incision in the middle, and then twists it in a way that is very unique. They're gonna fry this here in a minute. For frying the dough, they are using just animal fat that has been frozen, melting it down and that's gonna be used as the oil. <laughs> the biscuits are done frying. These are known as borzuk, and they're meant to be eaten with the clotted cream, and you can see that really intricate shape. They're still hot with the oil. Oh, very, very hot actually. Let me grab a little bit of clotted cream here and put it on top. Oh, I think this is gonna be good. 
That is good. Mm. Mm. It has a really bouncy texture, almost like a Chinese yotiao, but a little bit more dense than a yotiao. And with the clotted cream, it really like soaks it up. And it's crispy on the outside, still nice and hot from that oil. Mm. Bocek. Good. I like it. The food just keeps on being prepared, keeps on coming. So we just finished trying the biscuits. Now we're preparing another dish. Samba. <laughs> So this is one dish that I've been looking forward to trying. It's called zamba, and there's only four ingredients. So she starts with hot milk tea, and then she adds the ghee from the halmak that we had earlier, the byproduct ghee. And then third is the sugar, and then last, barley flour. So she's mixing it all up, and then she's going to kind of form it with her hands into sort of like a donut, actually. So here we have the finished product, the zamba. You can see it almost looks like brown sugar, almost like gingerbread uh, dough. And so I'm supposed to take some like this and then you actually like form it in your hand like this. And this is usually what the father will do for the kids. And then you can just pop it in your mouth. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You can taste that like barley, it's kind of earthy. And there's a lot of sugar in this one. It's probably the sweetest thing we've had so far. The texture is like cookie dough. It's exactly like cookie dough, actually. That's delicious. I love it. Luke has prepared me a little piece of the <laughs> dough as well. My turn to try. Mm. Actually, it's quite nutty. It's very nutty mm. and really sticky. That's good. That's a good snack. Really sweet. Mm. So we are getting a little full. This has been an awesome breakfast so far. We're heading outside and we're going to prepare arul, which is a very, very popular thing yeah, here in Mongolia. So we're just out front of the gear and they are slicing the arrow, which is cow's milk that has been boiled down, turned to curd, and it's sort of like cheese. It's like Mongolian cheese and they let it sit overnight and then they dry it. So she's actually cutting it with a thin, almost like a fishing uh, wire, very, very thin and it cuts very easily. And you can see now they've got the uh, finished product here that's gonna dry for a little bit and then we'll try it. And this can last all summer long. So some of this arrow has already been sitting out drying for a little while, so I'm gonna grab a piece here, just a small piece. I've tried this already, and this stuff is like really, really, really strong. Yeah, it's definitely not my favorite, but it's everywhere here, especially in the summertime. It is like very sour, very tart, it's not that bad. This one is a little bit more fresh maybe than the other ones I've had. Mm. I was wondering what all this poop was on the ground because I couldn't identify it because it was too small. I was thinking like, hmm, rabbits? <laughs> I was not thinking. It's just all these goats and sheep. <laughs> all poop. Goats. They're so cute. 
Oh. Look at them all looking at us. Oh my god. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> what do you want? Okay. Bah. Oh, that's a sheep, right? Yeah. Oh, there's some sheep in there. So we're finished off with breakfast. There was so many different dishes that we just tried, and you can see how Mongols really make the most of dairy. So this family is a cow herding family primarily. They obviously have a ton of goats and sheep as well, but they actually take all their products, like the clotted cream and the arrow, to the market to sell. So I think we're just gonna digest a little bit, take a little bit of a break, and then the cows actually come back in the evening time to be milked. So we're going maybe to go for a horse ride before the cows come back, and then we'll be milking some cows this evening. Oh. <laughs> We just got back to the gear and we spotted grandma working away at rope making. So she is using real horse hair to wrap together these massive coils of rope, all made of horse hair. This is incredible and it's really, really strong. So cool. <laughs> They're just uh, herding in all the horses, which are kind of semi-wild. They've got all the horses in the pen now, but they have to pick us out one that's relatively calm. They call it a sheep horse. So he's gonna wrangle them up with this rope here. Check this out. So he just perfectly lassoed one of the horses. That's the one we're going to ride. So I think they're gonna saddle it up now. And we're gonna jump on. So I've never ridden a horse before and this is like a big step because these things are semi-wild so I got only basically one tip and that was approach from the left side so let's try. Do not do, do, not do loud sound. No loud sound. Ah, oh, e, oh. Okay. <laughs> really fun. The 15 year old boy is clearly very experienced. Um, I don't know what I'm doing but it's actually a lot easier than it looks and this horse is really friendly and beautiful too. Sabrina's turn? Yep, here goes. How do you feel? A little nervous. So just hold it loose? Hold it loose but you can kind of pull one way to turn them. Maybe just one loop. Couple loops. Maybe just one. <laughs> How was that? That was cool. <laughs> Really cool <laughs> to experience that. 
even though we were just walking around. It was fun. Easy or hard? Yeah. Um, when it's walking really slow, pretty easy. You just sit there and kind of hold on tight. But I think you got to really appreciate when these guys are going out there running. <laughs> Finish off with riding the horses. That was a lot of fun. Even though we're just going around in circles, it was still quite the experience out here on the Mongolian steppe. So now it's time to actually milk the cows. Hey. <laughs> so she just brought the baby cow out of the um, little stable that they're in in order to get the mother ready to start milking. I think she's gonna start milking it now. <laughs> So every morning and evening, the whole family will take turns milking cows. They'll do about 40 cows a day, and she's constantly talking to the cows, making them feel comfortable, and all of this milk will be used tomorrow or the next day for those different breakfast items that you watch us eat this morning. It's fascinating to see the use of just milk, cow milk here. It's absolutely incredible. So many different things and so delicious just from one simple ingredient. Each cow is producing between three to five liters a day. So 40 cows, that's up to 200 liters of cow milk every day. So you can see how this would be such an important part of their diet. Watching these women work and milk the cows, I mean, they are living off of this stuff. They need it every single day to survive out here. It's harsh conditions and seeing them work uh, really makes you appreciate being able to go to the store and just buy whatever you want and not having to work very hard for it. Um, so it really puts things into perspective when you come out here. Um, but they're loving their life, they enjoy this, and it's really an amazing experience to come and watch them. And we're very thankful for this experience. So this is super cool. Back at our gear after another incredible day here in Mongolia, and we are ending the day the same way that we started it with. <laughs> a cup of hot milk tea. If you didn't check out yesterday's episode though, hit the link down in the description box. We showed you the true Mongolian barbecue known as bodok, a full goat cooked within itself. It was a crazy day and you do not want to miss it if you didn't check it out. So hit the link down in the description box. Today was amazing. What did you think of riding the horse? The riding the horse was awesome. I think that maybe the 15 year old boy thought it was kind of lame to just <laughs> go around, around in circles. <laughs> but I would like I couldn't go any faster. It was something that you have to get used to and it's really cool to kind of have that relationship with the animal after like we were petting it and yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And just seeing how important dairy is in the diets of Mongols. Yeah. It's basically all they will eat the country folk in the summertime and mm -hmm. then in the winter they'll switch to the meat heavy dishes mm -hmm. so you saw today just preparing it in so many different ways it was yeah. incredible yep. let us know down below which one of those dairy dishes look the most delicious to you and would you ride a semi-wild mongolian horse <laughs> let us know down below hit subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video and we'll see you again from mongolia very soon Bye bye